Matthew Ward, January 18, 2016 By Suzanne Ward Website The Matthew Books With loving greetings from all souls at this station, this is Matthew. We rejoiced with you when the waning days of 2015 brought forth resounding cheers that an international agreement had been approved to reign in the man-made causes of your changing climate. It is so that Mother Earth is moving gradually toward a moderate climate globally, however, the prudent action by your governments is essential on behalf of your health, the planets, and future generations and the high vibrations of hopefulness about this landmark cooperative effort are strengthening the resolve to meet the goals that were set. That representatives from 200 or so nations signed the long-discussed terms of the agreement is in itself evidence of vibrations positive effects. Something else that affects the condition of Earth and all of her life forms is the prevalence of chemtrails. Albeit that all along members of your universal family have been reducing their toxic effects. A few years back money for spraying ran out, but only briefly were your skies clear. The Illuminati refunded their project so it could resume instigating record level temperatures, drought and flooding, along with causing respiratory illness in people who have weak immune systems. We don't know when the chemtrails will stop but stop they will public awareness of their damage is growing and Illuminati influence keeps crumbling. Meanwhile, the explanation for spraying is that it's to protect the ozone layer that prevents the sun's harmful rays from reaching Earth. The fact is, millennia back in your timing, ones within the dark forces erected a grid of ozone molecules to prevent the sun's beneficial rays from reaching the planet and its gradual depletion is Mother Earth's doing to aid restoration of her environmental health, and enhance the well-being of all her residents. For some years we have been saying that the Illuminati's centuries of controlling the economy, commerce and currencies worldwide would be coming to an end. Volatility in the stock markets the transactions are nothing more than a flurry of computer activity anyway because they have no monetary backing ultimately will lead to ending the Illuminati's financial stranglehold, so the new global economic system can be implemented. This complex process will not happen overnight and is designed so that the changeover from the pervasively corrupt system to one based on precious metals will be minimally and temporarily disruptive. Welcome all indications that an honest, fair economic system managed by knowledgeable persons with moral and spiritual integrity is on its way. Please don't think that relentless upheaval and fighting in the Mideast and some North African countries bodes ill for peace ever coming to that region. What you are seeing is the continuation of energy that was set in motion long ago by its attachments, instructions, negativity-laden thought forms shooting up from the planet. Energy cannot make a U-turn. Once set in a direction, it stays on that course until its attachments are spent and once again energy is free to be its neutral self, ready for new instructions, and in that region combative instructions have been re-fortified for millennia. The time of ending the perpetual cycle is at hand, and in this, your role is vital being optimistic, confident, kind, grateful compassionate and forgiving amidst the high vibrations that are propelling energy streamers toward the peaceful world you are there to help usher in. A number of readers have written about what one referred to as Islamization of the Western world, another asked if this is intentional destabilization of Europe, and the uneasiness of readers in the United States stems from the terrorist act committed by a Muslim couple in California, and anti-Muslim vandalism that followed. It is logical to attribute these perspectives to Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State, but in part this is fear of differences, a common reaction to anything perceived as markedly different from what is familiar. To address the stated concerns, individuals in, or influenced by those groups claim they are acting in the name of their religion, but their brutal disregard for life and control by terror is totally contrary to the founding precepts of Islam. Centuries back, the Christians who embarked upon that religion's bloody history also acted upon extremist ideologies that were grievous distortions of the faith they were intent upon spreading. 
that history occurred during an era of very low vibrations that not only fostered, but gave impetus to barbarism to wit. Throngs cheered when people whose religious beliefs differed from theirs were put into an arena to be mauled by lions. One result of today's dramatically increased vibratory rate, magnification of personal traits and behavior, is having much the same effect on individuals with sadistic proclivity, most of whom are acting upon perverted concepts about their own and other religions. Except for those individuals, but a handful of the world's population devout Muslims and Christians live by the benevolent tenets of their religions and eschew the extremely harsh passages in the Quran and the Bible that have no place in life today. Our beloved family of all faiths, your formal religious observances and customs differ. The foundation of your lives is the same. You revere and pray to a supreme being, you are devoted to family and instill in your children sterling values. You want to be meaningfully productive, to live safely, peacefully, and be healthy and prosper, you help people in needful circumstances. As conscious awareness continues expanding throughout your world, all religions will evolve into the purity of spirituality that people of every faith will embrace full-heartedly. Society will respect each person as a God self, inseparably connected at soul level with all others and the fear of differences that underlies animosity, bigotry and divisiveness no longer will exist on earth. What is behind causing, and precipitating all these shootings? I don't believe people or souls are volunteering to die, etc. Although the reader is referring to mass shootings in the United States, this is a worldwide matter. Here, too. It is the effect of prevailing vibrations individuals with radicalized convictions or mental derangement are acting upon their intense negative feelings. And some deaths have been assassinations by one means or another scientists, journalists, healthcare professionals, individuals in government who cannot be bought anyone who has information that the Illuminati do not want widely known. If karma is not involved, a leveling factor applies. Persons whose soul contracts didn't include dying when the physical life ended get credit for fulfilling third density karmic lessons, if necessary, if not, the premature death cancels a difficult experience that would have been chosen in another embodiment. Either way, the individuals advance in involvement status, and that is the goal of every soul. It is similar with people who sustain life changing wounds that are not a contract choice and killers who act outside their contracts incur a heavy karmic burden in another incarnation. As for the claim that Pope Francis and President Obama have participated in satanic rituals and pedophilia, it appears that since the Illuminati's attempts to assassinate these men have failed time and again, they resorted to Plan B discredit the two most powerful individuals who are uprooting their global network. What is true is, the international headquarters of the satanic cult is in the bowels of the Vatican, and Pope Francis and a few cardinals who share his determination are taking steps to expose and end these diabolical rituals. Also it is true that Satanism has a strong foothold in the United States, including the entertainment industry where faked films are easily fabricated, and President Obama is working with others to abolish the rituals in that country. Now I am speaking only as Matthew. What I shall say is known to all souls at this station, but for two reasons it's appropriate that I speak for myself. The first is because I was a guest in spirit, you could say, at a recent conversation among my sister, mother and two visiting friends. They think most people in the United States will be in shock when the truth comes out that officials at the highest level of their government were involved in the national tragedy that occurred September 11, 2001. Since shortly after that event, photographs, scientific analysis of tower debris, reports from engineers, architects and individuals in the aviation industry and the numerous deviations from standard procedures have been available on the internet, clearly showing that the official story is false. Still, most people who would see that evidence would choose not to believe it. Why? From infancy you are told that whatever authorities say is correct and in your best interests. 
At first it is parents and other adult family members, and as children age, authorities include teachers, religious leaders, doctors, dentists and elected officials. Learning that persons whose information you regarded as gospel were wrong is disillusioning. That a president and his colleagues could so mercilessly, treacherously betray their nation and lie to the world is inconceivable. The other reason I am speaking for myself also pertains to 9-11. A nurse whose patients sometimes talk to her after they transition sent an email to my mother. She wrote that a representative for the people who died when the towers were demolished told her they wanted to send through me their message to the world, and their words are as cogent now as those years ago, let no more lives be taken. This is the time to keep love above all, for compassion, for bringing healing to the bereaved and injured, for bringing healing to earth. Please know that the hearts that are hardened into wanting to kill others as their tribute to us. They need light above all. We petition you from the whole of this realm of heaven to speak of love, of opening eyes to seeing clearly what is happening on earth, and rising above the tragedy that has been perpetrated by a darkness you cannot even imagine, where your entire world is expendable. We see this from here, we need you to help the myriad light workers by uplifting your hearts and allowing light to come in, by comforting those in fresh sorrow. You must hear our plea. We are working in the light to assist you, and we are forever bonded with you in love. All sensitive souls in this universe are saddened by the continuing of bloodshed, and in moments even you light workers think it could be unending. Dear ones, the killing will end and so will unquestioned acceptance of information from authorities. You say, the truth will set you free. Yes. Not only will long hidden truths emerge, but people are beginning to trust their soul-level guidance wherein truth is known, and changes demanded by enlightened peoples will bring a world at peace. Information about the soul and prior messages continues to elicit comments and questions, and we welcome these opportunities to offer more insight. But first we want to address what a reader in the United States wrote Why is Matthew talking so much about all the soul information which he has explained in the past extensively, when there's so much more important issues happening here? Nothing happening anywhere in your world is more important than your knowing the soul you are. Without this, there can be no understanding of life itself. No awareness that your essence is pure love light energy or that you are a multi-dimensional God self with unlimited capacity for manifesting or that you are having simultaneous lifetimes elsewhere in the universe and designed this one so you could assist in Earth's transformation. You wouldn't realize that as the soul you are, you do know all of that and much, much more, but the denseness of physicality is preventing your vast storehouse of universal knowledge from reaching your consciousness. Always the purpose of our messages has been to offer enlightenment, guidance and encouragement during these uniquely challenging times, and it is gratifying that according to thousands of emails and letters sent to my mother, the messages are serving their purpose. That said, the readers cited issues have to do with the political situation that is being fueled by the media, and we do understand her concerns. Other readers have expressed the same feelings, and they are in the company of millions, many of whom live in other countries that also feel the impact of decisions made in the United States. Souls at this station are apolitical and non-judgmental, and when we speak about these matters, it is to explain why politics always has been a plague on the planet from antiquity onward, the aim of the darkness has been divide and conquer and how that is changing. Like everything else in this universe, every aspect of politics rhetoric, intent and actions is energy fluctuating at one frequency, or vibratory rate, or another. Long ages ago. The rate started diminishing and spiraled downward until the civilization was stuck in deep third density, consciously, spiritually and location-wise. When Gaia no longer could abide the agony that political leaders were inflicting upon the masses, she cried out for help, instantly powerful sources beamed the intensive light that saved the life of her planetary body and enabled it to start ascending. 
volunteers from spiritually advanced worlds started arriving to generate light on the planet, adding to the abundance streaming from distant sources. As light has been intensifying, the vibratory rate has been rising. Today's rate as it pertains worldwide to candidates running for office and individuals holding office is this those who are fomenting fear, advocating or employing hostile force, oppressing citizens on the basis of gender, race or religion, or are against programs and policies that would benefit the planet and all its residents are swimming against the tide that's flowing ever more strongly toward diplomacy, reconciliation, cooperation mutual respect and environmental protection. To all who are asking the same as this reader who is going to be the next U.S. president, we can only repeat what we said quite some time ago we don't know. Earth's monitors in Nirvana tell us that energy around the candidates is too chaotic to determine how much is generated by the media, how much by the public. Also, a great deal will be happening between now and the election that will affect voters' decision. We can tell you our observations from this vantage point, activity in Earth's energy field of potential, the workings of universal laws, how other civilizations have been assisting you, and marvels of the golden age in full bloom. That is why we have been able to tell you with certainty there will be no World War III, no nuclear explosions in space, no massive changes in land and sea configuration. No invasion by a civilization that will enslave you, no validity to end times prophecies, or other fear-filled predictions. But because free will reigns over all, and the countless decisions your society makes each moment impact each other, we don't know who will do what, or exactly when something will happen. What we do know is, people in every country want honorable, honest, wise leaders who assure that all of their citizens are served fairly and justly. Beloved family, light beings throughout the universe want this for you, and it is coming it is the cornerstone of Earth's destiny. Yes, mother, I see that there's no space for any soul questions. We will answer them in the next message I think readers will be especially interested in the first one on your list. In farewell we say. We honor your steadfastness and service to the light and are with you in spirit all along your earth journey. Love and Peace. Suzanne Ward. Website The Matthew Books.